And once they have cooled, you can dive into one. I'm just going to come up here and grab one. I don't know if you can hear that. So cool. Look at those different flakes. Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today, I'm going to show you how to make puff pastry from scratch. Oh yeah, I love homemade puff pastry. It is super versatile and can be used for so many different things. For example, here on my channel, I've made cinnamon twists, apple tarts, apple roses, strawberry napoleon, and cheese danishes, all of which I used a frozen puff pastry, but you could easily use this homemade puff pastry instead, especially if you don't want to go to the store and buy that pre-made frozen stuff. And homemade tastes so much better. It's really easy to do, only four ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my new videos. Let's get baking. Down below in the description box, you'll find a list of the ingredients and their amounts. So here we go. We have two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour. And then I have a um, about three-fourths of a cup that I'm going to have on the side that we're going to use for dusting and things like that. And then I want to add one half teaspoon of salt. We'll come in here and just give that a good whisk. And so I have two thirds cup of cold water. And I'm not going to add it all in. Just start with that amount. And now we're just going to mix it. You can use a stand mixer with a dough hook if you want. But let's just mix that in. Add some more. And I'm just stirring it together first. And then eventually, I'm going to come in here with my clean hands and we'll just get that dough together. See that? Just use your hand as a mixer. Add a little bit more water. And we want to get it to the point where it's not really tacky anymore. A little bit more water. Okay, and now it's just a little bit too sticky. I added a little bit too much water. So I'll just put a little bit of flour in there. All right, this is probably pretty good. Okay, and then we're going to just knead the dough just a little bit. Okay, so when you touch on it, it's going to spring back a little bit and maybe just a slight stick to it, not too much. Okay, and now we want to chill and rest the dough. But before we do that, we want to roll it out a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of extra flour, take a rolling pin, and we want to roll it out. And you can come in here with like a dough cutter and square it up. That'll help to square it. Okay, so we have a square here, and this one is roughly Oh, about eight inches by eight inches. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. Just get it like that. And now what we want to do, just take a little bit of flour. We'll just dust it a little bit on that side. We'll flip it over just a little bit. Flour on that side. And then we'll take some plastic wrap. And we want to cover the dough in plastic wrap. So it doesn't dry out and then we're going to put this in the refrigerator and let the dough rest and chill for 30 minutes. And now we're going to make uh, the block of butter. And so I have one cup of butter here and we'll just open this up. And it's been out for about 20 minutes. It'll just make it a little easier to make our butter slab or butter block if it is a little bit softer. And then I'm just going to break it up, take my dough cutter here, 
And now what we want to do, take a little bit of flour. It's okay if flour gets mixed in with the butter. And now is the really fun part. I love this. I love turning this into a nice slab of butter, which is what we want to do. And I like using this meat tenderizer to do this, but you can just use your rolling pin if you want to. And then I'm going to just come in here and just kind of pound this butter in together. However you want to make your butter slab, it's up to you. Okay, now that I pretty much have it pounded down, add a little bit more flour. And I want to do this about, come in and press it down and just measure it to be about five inches, which is about the width of this dough cutter. And there we go. That is a nice little butter block <laughs> ready to go. And now what we want to do is we want to put this in plastic wrap as well. And then we want to chill it along with the dough. Just go underneath it so it pulls up the slab. And you could also do this with parchment paper as well if you want. And now we have an awesome little butter block. So again, put this in the fridge and we'll let it chill with the dough for a half hour. All right, once the dough and the butter block have chilled, what we wanna do is we'll take the dough and we'll remove this plastic wrap. We're gonna save the plastic wrap because we can reuse this. And then I'll take some flour. I want to roll this out just a little bit more. And then we have our butter. Let's undo the butter. I usually do like a line, just kind of mark it where the butter's supposed to go. If you watch my croissant video, this will look very familiar to you. And we'll just roll out these corners so we can create some flaps. Just a little bit. This part doesn't matter a whole lot. Okay, and then we're gonna just angle the butter like this and we'll just wrap that dough up into a neat little pouch. And it's okay if it overlaps a little bit, that'll all get rolled together fine. All right, and then so we have our nice little pouch, make sure the sides are crimped. And then make sure our surface is well floured. Now we are going to roll this out now with the butter and we'll just push it down in the middle and we'll just start to roll. Just like that, and it's about 18 inches. And then we'll roll it out the sides. And if you need to, just come in your hands because we want to keep it to a rectangle. And now we want to fold it. So we'll take this in and fold it in thirds. And you kind of want to get some of that excess flour off. You can use a pastry brush or just get the excess off with your fingers. And then we'll just fold this over like that. And then we want to turn it this way and roll towards the fold. So this way out, we'll roll again. So that was the first fold that we do. And now we're going to do the second fold. And this is called laminating the dough. And this is what's gonna give us all those layers of butter and dough and get nice and flaky. And so we'll go sideways. And once, the, as the dough heats up, while you're working with it, it's gonna get hard to roll out. And that's when we need to chill it again. So usually you can get about two folds in before you have to chill it again. So now we want to fold it back up and chill it. So just fold it over like in thirds, like this. And then we'll put it back in our plastic wrap and we will chill it again. And then we will repeat the process. There we go. All right, took it out of the fridge unwrap it from the plastic, 
We'll set the seam side down. Again, add a flower as needed. And we will just kind of push it down like that. And then roll it out. And then we will fold it again. So even though it takes a little while, it takes about two, two and a half total hours to make it. There's not a lot of active time. It's only about maybe 30 minutes total of active time. All right, so I just did it one more time. Um, I didn't show that on camera, but I rolled it out again. So we'll fold it back up and we'll put it back in the fridge. All right, once again, we will remove it from the fridge, add some more of our flour, and roll this way. And then we will fold it in. Excellent, and we'll do it just one more time. I believe that was six folds, it might have been five. Five or six is fine. And now, we can use this however we want. You can use it for any of those recipes that I mentioned that I have here on my channel, or use it for a different recipe. Anytime a recipe calls for puff pastry, you can use this. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna just show you um, some things that I like to make, just quick and easy. I'm gonna just run this down the middle, pizza cutter. And then what I'll do is if you want to, if you want to save some of this, you can freeze it. And so what you'll do, add some flour, and then I have some pieces of parchment paper that I just have cut out. And you'll just fold this onto the parchment paper. Put another layer of parchment paper down. Like so. And then I'll just put this one on there and then we can wrap this again and then you can freeze it until you wanna use it again. And then what you'll do, just like what you'll do with frozen puff pastry is you'll take it out and let it thaw at room temperature for about 40 minutes or so until it's a little pliable and then you can work with it, unfold it, and then use it however you like. All right, so I'm gonna put this half in the freezer and I'm gonna cook up, bake up this half. I'm not sure if you can see the little layers, but you can see close up, there's these really nice layers of dough and butter. And then what we'll do is, we'll, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make some little um, cinnamon tarts. So I'm just gonna come up here and do some angles like this. And then what I'm gonna do is take another, take a, a pan lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat. I'm gonna put these right on there. And then I'm just gonna take some, a little bit of butter and just go over the tops of these. I'm just gonna make a little basic butter cinnamon tart. I'll come in here with the cinnamon and sugar mix that I always have on hand. Just put that on there. And then I'll leave this one and this one plain. And I'm gonna put this in a preheated oven, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm gonna bake them for about 22, 23 to about 26 minutes until they puff up and get nice and golden brown onto that step. And when they come out of the oven, they'll look something like this. Look how amazing that is. It probably puffed up about three, four times as much as high of the, that the dough was before it went in the oven. Pretty awesome. You can see the different layers and flakes and then just let it cool down before biting into them. And once they have cooled, you can dive into one. I'm just gonna come up here and grab one. Now if you can hear that. So cool, look at those different flakes. Mmm. All right, the homemade puff pastry is done and turned out fantastic. Use it for all of your puff pastry needs. I'm Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down the corner, push it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Take care. Time for me to dive into this. Oh yeah. 
grab this one that I pulled apart already. Mmm. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. 